the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 8. John 8. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, 
went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go, and sin no more. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came, and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come, and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law, that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasury, as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me, the Father hath not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house for ever, but the Son abideth ever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. 
he was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews, and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan, and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself, and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. May God help us to be doers of the word. For the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 8. John 8. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him. And he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Nor on good works will 
Just walk shall perish, shall crumble and decay. The falls of bricks and granite, the years shall sweep away. Our souls live on forever in joy or misery. And character is destined to last eternally.
worship service today. Thank you for your goodness, your power. Thank you for your presence here. We're asking, Lord, that your word will reach every heart in Jesus' name. And today will be a day of blessing, every form of blessing for everyone. We're asking, Lord, open all our hearts, touch our hearts, transform our hearts, transform our lives to meet with you and to meet with all the goodness of the Lord in our lives in Jesus' name. Confirm your blessing of ev on everyone without exception. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the good people of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can see them today. We're coming to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I'm reading from verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Reading from verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do, to observe, and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth and then in verse 2 it tells us and all these blessings shall come upon thee upon me and overtake thee if, if, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And then in verse 3, it tells us, Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. In verse 4, it says, Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, your children, and the fruit of thy ground, your produce, and the fruit of thy cattle. And then it says, The increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. In verse 5, it tells us, it says, Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Look at verse 7 there. In verse 7, it says, Then the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Thou shalt come out, they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. In verse 8, it says, in verse 8, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Look at verse 9. In verse 9 it says, The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee. If thou, look at that word, if, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Verse 10 says, oh, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of thee. Are you here? Good amen there. In verse 11, verse 11 says, And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and the Lord, and it says, And the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Verse 12 there says, The Lord shall open unto thee, unto me is good treasure the heaven to give thee the rain into thy land in a season and to bless all the work of thine hand all all the work of thine hand and thou shalt lend to many nations and thou shalt not borrow and then it says in verse 13, And the Lord shall make thee the head, the head, the head, 
I, I think I need to explain that. When it says the hedge, you know, when you think of the hedge, that's where all blessing is, all things that we do, that's where it comes from. If the, if the hedge is dull, life will be dull. If the hedge is a kind of retarded, dull, weak, not having ability to learn and to retain, life will be shallow. But when you have a good hedge, I'm talking about you. And when you have a brilliant hedge, I'm talking about you today, it says it shall not be like, you know, the head is down and you cannot give control and command to the rest of the body. I'm praying that this year, our people here, there, everywhere, where, wherever you are, the Lord will make you the head. Now, now, if the Lord is going to make you the head, you must not lose your head. Once you lose your head, you have lost everything. The head, in control of the whole body, in control of life, in control of progress, in control of every good thing the Lord has said before you. Lose your head and you lose everything else. That's why people, when they watch you, you take this action, you take this action, and they know that the way you are going, you're likely to end in the ditch. And they know it's because of things happening around you. That's why your head is here, your head is there, your head is there, your head is there. They say, man, be careful. Don't lose your head. And they say, woman, look at your family and look at things you are doing. Don't lose your head. And I want to tell the church, this year, whatever happens around you, whatever does not happen around you, just, just look and see. Just wait and see. Everything will soon be all right. And so don't lose your head. Tell the person by your side, look at them, don't lose your head. Now, in the Christian life, when we say head, H, holiness. Don't lose your holiness. Once you lose your holiness, you've lost the head. And you've lost the edge, the cutting edge, where God is sending you. E, don't lose your excellence. If you are excellent, then be moving on and be moving up and be progressing every time. You know, once you lose your excellence, you know, something happens. Let's say you're a good uh, kind of, a good engineer. And the people who are walking around you, they, they do something like this and all that. You say, what, what about, okay, if that's the case, then let's drop the excellence that we're being uh, pursuing. And once you do that, the people don't know the reason why you're no more excellent, you're no more extraordinary. They think it's your fault. They don't think it's the fault of the people around you, your head, your holiness, and your excellence. Don't lose your anointing if you happen to be a preacher, if you happen to be a Christian, if you happen to be a believer, there is an anointing upon you. And if you are not going to lose your head, you will not lose your holiness, you will not lose your excellence. It is for the anointing, you will not lose your anointing. Now, people are known for distinctives. You look at Moses and the rod in his hand, you can know that's his distinctive. And then you look at Joshua and you look at him saying, Son, stand up there, stay there. That's his own peculiar uh, distinctive. You don't find any other person doing that. And then you look at Isaiah and you find him saying, Go tell Ezekiah. That man, Sennacherib, that is coming, it will not go back by the same way. And then 185 soldiers were killed in one night. You don't find that with everybody. Every preacher, every pastor, 
every prophet and every professional, everyone has his distinctives. And so when he says he'll make you the head, it's not just talking about head, it's talking about your holiness. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. He's talking about excellence. That's what Daniel had. He had an excellent spirit. And then your anointing and your distinctive. So the Lord will make you the head. A good amen. amen. And remember, don't lose your head. Holiness. Excellence, anointing, distinctive. I'm looking at verse 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if thou wilt shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Amen. Amen. Today we're talking on the complete possession of our covenant blessings. The complete possessions of our, of our covenant blessings. Three things we're looking at. Look at number one here. Number one, the conditional promise from our covenant benefactor. He benefits us. He is our benefactor. And he gives us a covenant and from him we have the promises attached to the covenant. But those promises, as you look at them very closely and as you look at them wanting to possess them and wanting to preserve them in your life, those promises of the covenant are conditional. Number one, the conditional promise from our covenant benefactor. Number two, is the conferred privilege of covenant keeping believers. The believers who look at the covenant of God and they look at the conditions and they want to have the privilege of having the fulfillment, the conferred privilege of covenant keeping believers. Number three is the courageous prayer of all covenant keeping beneficiaries. The, the prayer we pray, not, not the ground level prayer, and not the ordinary prayer, not the usual prayer, not the repeated prayers we have always prayed. Every time we pray, we we'll start the same way and go on, asking the same thing and ending up the same way. Whatever message we hear, and whatever challenge we have, and whatever new conviction God plants in our hearts, we we'll keep on praying the same, not that kind of prayer, courageous prayer of all the covenant keeping beneficiaries. Let's come to number one. Number one is the conditional promise of our covenant benefactor. We're looking at Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5. As you look at all these verses we're going to look at here, you'll find the word if. That's the condition. If you do this, then I will do that. If, if the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, if he does this, then I, the Almighty, I will do this. You're looking at divine human partnership and relationship. And God says the covenant, and he says, if the human on earth will do this, then I in heaven, this is what I will do. Notice that word in your Bible. Every time you read a promise, every time you read whatever God has said that he will do, you look at that word, A. Look at Exodus now. Exodus chapter 19, we're reading from verse 5. Exodus 19, 5, now, therefore, if ye will obey, my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. He wants to lift you up above all the people you know, all the people around you, all the people in your immediate circle of a relationship. Yet it says, I want to lift you up. I can do it. That's what I want to do. That's my will. And that's my passion for you. 
but there is a condition if ye will obey my voice indeed then i will keep and keep my covenant then it shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is my look at verse six in verse six and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation and look at uh, chapter 23 exodus 23 we're looking at verse 22 in exodus 23 verse 22 but if you see that it's conditional we cannot just come and say god bless me bless me bless me and the lord will say my son my daughter obey me obey me obey me and then you say god forget about that i don't have the intention to obey i don't have the intention to live a righteous life i don't like holiness but i love healing and then god says now you want to make me your servant Go ahead and bless me. Go ahead and heal me. Go ahead and do that. Promote me. But you are not willing to look at the condition. He says, Abe, thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. Then I will be an enemy to thine enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries then in verse 23 it tells us it says for mine angel capital a mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the amorites and the hittites and the Perizzites and the gan and the canaanites and the hivites and the jebusites and i will cut them off Verse 24, in verse 24 you says, Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt surely, utterly dis overthrow them and quite break down their images. That's a condition. You're not in partnership with unbelievers. We're sinners, we're rebellious people, we're disobedient people, and we're the people that take themselves as an idol. You're not supporting their idol worship, and you're not supporting their hero worship. You support the word of God, and you support Christ, the very Son of God. You will not bow down to anyone's image, Nebuchadnezzar's image, or Pharaoh's image, if you'll be obedient to the word of the Lord, then he says, this is what you'll look at, verse 25, in verse 25, and ye shall serve the Lord thy God. You don't serve yourself. When you are happy, you render a good service. When you are not happy, then you render a kind of worthless service. You are not serving God, you are serving self. And the condition of self, and the condition of your body, and the condition of your family determines the kind of service you render. That's not serving God, but it says that you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water and i will take sickness away from the midst of thee remember if you obey his voice in deuteronomy chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 12 deuteronomy chapter 7 we're looking at verse 12 if ye look at that if the conditions are always there. And if you just rush ahead, rush ahead, pray, 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 pray. And then, you know, prayer is the key. Obedience is the key. Following after the Lord and fulfilling the condition is the key. They, you know, they deceive us with that kind of singing. Pray the key, pray the key. Uh, uh, Jesus prayed in the morning, prayed at noon, prayed everywhere. Prayer is the key. Sinners pray. Prayer is not their key. Repentance is their key. And church people pray. Prayer is not the key. Obedience is the key. It says, wherefore it shall come to pass. If ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep 
unto thee the covenant and the mercy which is swear unto thy fathers in verse 15 it says in verse 15 and the lord will take away from thee all sickness give me a good amen there and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but he will lay them upon them that hate thee. Another amen. Deuteronomy chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, and it shall come to pass, if thou, if thou, if thou, Thou. I wonder why people who read the Bible and they say they are in a Bible believing church. I wonder why and how they omit the condition and they take away that if. And then they go to the rest of the verse. They're looking for blessings, uh, you know, they're looking for the blessing of Moses upon the action of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. They're looking for the blessings of the obedient and faithful apostles uh, from, and they're living the life of an apostate who can't do that. That if is very important on a, at a time like this when we're considering the covenant of the Lord. It says very clearly there, and it shall come to pass if thou not they forget about what they do if you are looking for the blessing of God if you are searching that the blessings of God will be upon you if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God and observe to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Now, the church is um, a nation. That's what you find in the New Testament. It's made us a holy nation. And so, we can think of this church and say, this is a holy nation. We can think about another church, whatever the name, nation, nation, nation now. All those churches, nation, 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 the reason God will bless any church, any gathering, any assembly is if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all the commandments which I command thee this day. But now our members, ministers, workers, leaders sometimes we have to be uh, not really that we're you know going to the other place or the church to go and borrow anything or kind of transplant anything to deeper life but maybe somebody is doing something and we have to go there an event is happening maybe sometimes we just have to go there and then we see something there and then you see it looks like these people they are not totally following everything you think like that at first and then later you think okay if that church is doing that why are we not doing it the reason we're do not doing it is because our blessing does not depend on copying this church copying that church copying that church our blessing conditional blessing conditional promise conditional power and conditional outpouring overflowing blessing of god is if thou shalt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all that, not all that we see over there, all that we sense over there, all that we hear those other people are doing, it is if we do all this commandment which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations all the churches, all the gatherings, all the fellowships. Now, if everybody lowers the standard, 
every church, including Deep Alive, if we lower the standard and we're not thinking of the coming of the Lord, we're not thinking of the rapture, we're not thinking of what it takes to make it to heaven, and we're now at the same level, we'll be like, you know, the world will be trampling over us. We'll not have any distinctive any distinction, any difference between us and the world. And what happens to the world that God said, I will not put the diseases of the world of Egypt upon you. Then we find the same disease of the world rampant among us. Why? Because we're not noticing the condition and we're not distinguishing ourselves. We lose our head. We lose our holiness. We lose our excellence, what people know us for. We lose our anointing, the anointing that breaks every yoke. We lose our distinctives. And then we're just like sure the other people and the cockroaches and the serpents and the you know, reptiles of it crawling over us. God forbid in Jesus' name. And it says, and it shall come to pass, it thou shall hack him diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high Somebody who is saved has to be higher than somebody who is a sinner. Somebody who is sanctified has to be higher than the one who is only saved. And somebody who is spirit-filled, baptized in the Holy Ghost, has to be higher than the person who is just saved and sanctified. That edge must be there. And that promotion should be there. And that advance, advancement should be there. And it says, I lift you high above all the nations of the earth. And then in verse 2, in verse 2 it says, And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If that word is there again. The condition is always there. When you are praying, if you have prayed and prayed and prayed and there's no answer, go back and check up. Am I omitting the condition? Is there something from the Lord I'm not carrying out? The way I ought to carry out is my heart departed from the Lord? Is my life kind of trampling down upon the word of God? It's as we check the condition. Whether we're fulfilling the condition or not, it's as we check all the things that precede the fulfillment of the promise of God that we find out if I am not keeping to that, in small things, in big things, you know, some people say, you know, there's not a big deal. I know this is not right, but this is small. I know this is not right, but this is small. I know that's not right, but this is small. My brother, have you ever considered, my sister, have you ever considered that the lion does not kill thousands in a year in our continent, Africa? But the mosquito, this one doesn't matter. If I do my hand like that, the mosquito is gone. And yet that small thing kills millions of people all over the world with that malaria. You go to this place, they say, this one is malaria, this one is typhoid. You go to another place, that one is malaria, that is typhoid. Where do we get the malaria? And how is malaria killing so many people more than a lion will kill, more than an elephant will kill? Big, big sins don't come away most of the time. If the little mosquito sin, if the little thing doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, that's what kills our spiritual lives. And that's what takes the blessings away from us. That's why he's saying, look at the condition, look at what God is saying, and look at those little, little foxes that spoil the vine. It says, all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hack him unto the voice of the Lord thy God. God. And then we're looking at uh, verse 6 there. Look at verse 6. It says in verse 6, 
blessed shall thou be when thou goest out, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest, when thou comest and when thou goest out. And then in verse, in verse 7, it says, The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God. God giveth thee. Verse 9, in verse 9, that Lord shall establish thee and holy people, not just rich people, holy people, not just successful farmer, holy people, and it's not just progressive professional. He wants to establish us that will be holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee. If thou, if thou, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Verse 10, verse 10 says, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of thee. Verse 11, in verse 11 it says, And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, and in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers uh, to give Unto, to give thee. And then in verse 12, it says, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, and the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in a season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Amen. Remember that if, if you don't bribe, if you are not fraudulent, if you are not a seed, clever seed that will steal either from the office or will steal from the company or will steal in a dexterous way that nobody will know. Nobody will even suspect that that man, that woman can be a seed. If you are not stealing, if you are not fraudulent, if you are not playing internet fraud, if you are not doing any of the things that the Egyptians, the world that they are doing, it says, Hey, thou shall be obedient to the word of the Lord your God, then it will bless you above all the people that are stealing, all the people that are fraudulent. It will bless you above them in Jesus' name. And thou shalt not borrow, but will lend unto many people. But remember the aim. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, and the Lord shall make thee the head. Holiness, excellence, anointing, distinctive. If a head is not distinctive, that's no head. If the head is a mediocre, that's not a head. If the head, so to say, is not anointed, and it doesn't have the courage, the passion, the power, it doesn't have the spiritual strength, that's not a head. If a head is rolling every time, you know, something happens, it doesn't have the self-control, it doesn't have the self-discipline, it doesn't have the mastery over where he is and the surrounding. That's not a head. If the head is timid and afraid every time and the little, little puny pygmies can intimidate him or her, that's not a head. It's when somebody is lifted up by the Lord and then the Lord makes him a real head and you can tell that's a head. I'm pointing at you. I said, you can tell, that's a head. 
That's a sample. That's when somebody is ahead. But if somebody is like, you know, ordinary, you can push there, push there, trampled upon, things will change in your life. It says, the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath if, that's the condition, if, if that thou hearken unto the, unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe, and to do them, verse 14, in verse 14, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, and to the right hand or to the left to go after all the gods to serve them. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, but if, if, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I commanded this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You see the two sides. God is a good God, great God, balanced. If you obey, these are the blessings that will follow. If you disobey, no matter who you are, your name, your stature, your standing, and whatever I've done for you in the past, no matter who you are, it says for the children of Israel, if you will not hearken, if you will not obey, this is what will come. I pray we we'll position ourselves in the place of blessing all the time in Jesus' name. Uh, look at Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. We're reading from verse 16. It says, Wash you, the dirty hands, wash you, the dirty habits, wash you, the dirty environments, wash you. Their dirty clothing is wash you. It says wash you and make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. And then in verse 17, it says learn to do well. Learn to do well. Learning takes effort. Learning takes concentration. Learning takes perseverance. Look at when we went to school, we tried to learn the alphabets. They were strange, but we still kept on until we could master those alphabets. We, try, we learned the words. Difficult, but we made it. We learned construction of sentences. Difficult, we made it. We learned